Sometimes all it takes is quality time spent in your happy place to alleviate those stresses of day-to-day -day life. So when I found out we had an unexpected four-day weekend for the 4th of July, it was obvious a trip to the woods was in order. Maybe we could have spent the free time catching up on projects we've been putting off, sitting around the house relaxing, or swapping the axle into the old ignored YJ behind me. While appealing, none of those options were gonna suffice. It was time to head out on another underplanned adventure. But I spent the day or two notice that we had, planning where we would go, only to have the threat of major storms loom over both of the areas I had in mind. So an hour before we left, I chose a completely new path to a place in an area that we have never been, all in the name of trying to avoid storms. And it went something like this. Well, we're off on another adventure. I uh, wasn't expecting to get a four day weekend for the fourth, but here we are. So we got the trailer loaded up. You're gonna notice we're not in the JK. I'll explain that later. And uh, we're actually heading up the west side of lower Michigan right now. And we're gonna hit at least three different national forests. And yeah, right now we're just trying to get to a campsite before dark though. So we got Amber and Will with us. He was the only one of the kids that wanted to come along this time. So what are we driving, Amber? My Bronco that I went out and bought. And uh, what did you say I can't do to it? Destroy it, drive into a tree, uh, get it stuck, damage it. <laughs> now it is a Badlands edition, so we got all the lockers and sway bar disconnects and all the good fun stuff. We do not have a winch. We are going alone, so we are going to be keeping this kind of dirt road-ish for this trip. I gotta say, this thing is pretty fun to drive. I'm so used to driving my old shit boxes and stuff. This thing kind of feels like a spaceship to me. Our daylight fast and I don't want to set up camp in the dark so the place we were going is a little farther up the road but I just found another spot so we are gonna hope that something's there because there's a really only it's a very small forest service road so I'm hoping that we can find something. Little did I know we were gonna find the best campsite of the trip but we were gonna have to work for it. All right well we found this little road um, I really don't want to pinstripe up the side of her Bronco so it's not looking promising. It looks really narrow here, but we'll see what we can do. Problem is, if I have to back out, we have a trailer. And of course, we've already got a freaking tree blocking the trail, so I did bring a chainsaw, but it is so buried right now. We have to turn left up here, and I was hoping our turn was like right before this tree, but I don't think it is. Okay. It's right, literally right past the freaking tree. There ain't no driving over this one, and it's gonna bind up if I try to cut it. God dang it. That's a big boy. My freaking chainsaw is only like an eight inch. Yeah, you ain't cutting those. Yeah. You said it's like right there? No, the one we want is to the left. That's where the clearing is How at. How much farther is it down? Not too far. Define that. Like a quarter mile or something. I could get this cut to drop that part, but it gets so thick. I mean, this is why I brought a chainsaw, but it's such a small chainsaw. Because it wasn't quite as buried as I thought it was. Battery. Go. Amber and Will decided to go on a little scouting hike to check out the rest of the trail and the campsite while I was left behind to deal with this stupid tree. Ooh. 
That's a big boy. I'm not much of a lumberjack or a tree cutter, so you know if I'm doing something wrong, make sure you just stop everything you're doing so you can go down to the comments and tell me I'm doing it wrong. I really enjoy that. Too heavy. It's too heavy for me to move. Well, that's what I'm trying to do, but the weight of it makes it bind up the blade. I probably should have put something under it first. It took forever to get through this piece. Well, what do you think? It's doable. There's gonna be some other little stuff that you're gonna have to cut down out of the way, but, cause like there's one that's like leaning. It's really thin and that, but it could potentially puncture my soft top nut. It's just a couple things. Well, help me grab this end of this log. Yeah. Yeah, no, I had it picked up a little bit, but. I don't think it's broke through, is it? Unless I can pick it up and get something under there to get the bind off of it, I can't cut under it anymore. Find a good sturdy stick and stick it under like right here and lift up on the tree a little bit. Oh, I could drop. Just till this opens up a little bit. If we get up early enough, we can avoid all rain. Oh, dead. Yeah. What about if we cut this off and use this? Do the same thing with that. Now lift up on it. There you go. We should be able to move this one. You can let go. Ow. Oh, sorry, did I get you? Or that, that one? What All right. Saying? We got it, babe. Look at him. Well, help me move this shit. Don't just stand there. Whatever, we can get through that now. Yeah. All right. Good thing we brought a chainsaw. That was fun. Wait, does this trail keep going? Yeah, but it says right here that it ends, but it keeps going into the woods. I've been sitting here wondering while I edit this video. What is it about this campsite that made the grass only be six inches tall where every other place we tried to camp the rest of the trip had like four foot tall grass? I, I don't understand. Maybe the soil's different here. Maybe it's because we were further south still. I, I don't know. It was kind of sandy here. We were pretty close to the uh, dunes, Silver Lake dunes that everybody goes to. So who knows? Maybe that has something to do with it. So, 
I just realized I forgot probably the most important tote. I forgot the tool tote, which means I don't have the impact for spinning the jacks up and down. So I just sat there and did it with a wrench. And I also don't have any more batteries for the chainsaw because that's where all the batteries were. So we can't be running into too many more down trees is what I'm saying. Or I have to stop and buy the wall battery. The charger for them was also in there. My tools and probably some of our camp gear that I'm not even going to know what's in there until we get to that point. But uh, pretty well got this set up. I didn't even raise the tent so I can't walk under it. You all can't even see it. But we're going to get a fire going, get some food going and call it a night. What is this thing, dude? It's about to get punched. It's that bug. He's in the tree. You really think that's a good idea? <clears throat> Will's over there taking a pee pee. <laughs> 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 Well, this is our little humble camp. It's supposed to be raining by what, would you say seven or eight? So we're hoping to put this all away before it gets wet, just in time for it to get wet again tomorrow anyway, but that's tomorrow's problem. We were hoping to get up early and beat all this rain so we could get our stuff put away dry, but clearly that didn't happen. It's 5.40 in the morning and we're already getting dumped on and it's not going anywhere. We're close to the town of Whitehall, Michigan and yeah, you can see on the map, we're just gonna be getting it for a while. So I thought what better thing to do than just to shut the alarms off, lay my head back down and get some of the best sleep ever. Cause who doesn't love the sound of rain just pitter pattering on your tent? I could sleep all day like that. So yeah, the map kind of ends on the trail, but this thing definitely keeps going. As much as I'd love to explore it, we don't got the time. And it stopped raining for a minute, so we got camp broke down and we've uh, forgot some stuff, so we're going to resupply. I'm always a fan of leaving these campsites better than I found them. And I have not found one piece of trash at this place. So, oh, stand corrected. There's my good deed. So we just left out of that camp and on the way out, I think a local, he was on a quad with a dog and he kind of acted like we were in his woods. And he was about one passive aggressive comment away from me telling him he doesn't own the forest, but you know, whatever he's just making some back in the comments but we stopped and got some of the stuff that we forgot and now we're just kind of trying to head north we're trying to dodge the rain which is it's out there and i found this little trail up here and it looks like there's at least remnants of an old fire tower on the map i don't know if it still exists you can't see when you zoom it in on maps like all you can see is trees so i don't know all we could do is go and see if we can find it All right, so we made it to the start of whatever this is. Pretty much just looks like a two vehicle wide gravel road. Really hope there's a fire tower down here. Okay, so over here there's a gate and maybe it used to be a trail, but that is how we get to if there is a lookout tower there, it's like a thousand feet up, so I guess we're gonna have to hoof it. Right up there. I mean, it's not a locked gate. There's no signs that say keep out, but they did build a berm on either side. So we're just gonna walk it. So we keep going over these berms that got built probably to try to slow people down, but you can definitely see side by side tracks through here. There's even a boulder in the middle of the trail up here. I'm not really sure why I've been so obsessed with finding a fire tower lately. Maybe it's because I've seen a few of them on the internet and on other YouTube channels. And honestly, I never even knew they existed until I saw that. And now I just, I'm on this quest to find some.
There's a slug eating the one. <laughs> well, I guess we struck out on the tower, but I think this is where it used to be because we got all these timbers buried in here. Let's see if we can find any other remnants. Actually, I think I see a concrete footings over here. Dang it. I was really hoping we found one. Yep. They actually took this one down. One of the footings. And then this is probably a pad for where the bottom of the stairs were. Cool little teepee. And then there's a road that continues on that way that's all blocked off. And what's over here? Huh. And that looks like it would be a fun drive too. Actually, right before we came here, I tried to Google this. Some result came up that said there's only one standing fire tower in Lower Michigan, so I doubt I would have gotten so lucky for this to have been it. So the bad part about coming this way like we did is I had all these waypoints set up for down south of Missouri and all these waypoints up in northern Wisconsin. Both of those were going to get even worse rain than we did here, and we decided, hey, we've never been here, let's just go this way and do a big circle. So I have nothing planned. Every step of the way, I have to stop and figure out where we're going next. And we have a certain amount of distance we got to cover each day. Like by the end of today, we need to be to the Upper Peninsula or just short of it. And then by the end of tomorrow, we need to be across the Upper Peninsula and hopefully to Northern Wisconsin. And that way we're in good shape to get home Sunday. As much as I'd love to just explore, 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 we also have to cover some ground. Ugh, I guess I'll throw away somebody's crap. So we're gonna explore where we can and cover some ground where we can. This area of the Manistee National Forest is actually where I originally planned on camping last night, but we stopped sooner just to try to beat the dark. But there are a few more trails in this area, and the next one's called Mudslide, and we're heading there now. I don't even want to admit how many times I've had to get out and clear branches and vines and stuff because I'm, I'm trying super hard to not pinstripe this bronco up and it's like every hundred feet or something. Well, we'll just have to we'll break these vines off and just go through it. I think the uh, floor of the trailer might have went underwater in that one a little bit, so we might have some wet gear. finally hit the end of I don't even know it's showing these like the roads but it was that that muddy whatever trail and we've got I think right takes us back to where we started and left goes farther into the woods but it's already three o'clock and we've got to make a couple hours of driving and find a campsite farther north than this so I think it's time for us to cut ties with this uh, what was this manatee national forest something like that 
It's been real, but it's time for us to get out of here. Yay, more, more low hanging trees. I think we'll get under that one. Get out of here. Most of these mud holes have just been like sand bottom. Yeah. Well, we just came through the gate to exit and I saw this and I thought it was cool. Figured, I don't know who Pete Hosko is, but I'll pay my respects. It's a pretty awesome little monument to him. It was about this point in the trip, I was really starting to feel the pressures of trying to go so far on a four day trip. And really it was only more like a three day trip because we didn't leave until probably 2 p.m. on Thursday. Got to where we got to and we obviously had to drive home Sunday and we just, there's a long way to go, a long way. We realized here that we were kind of meandering through all these forest roads and there was like a river blocking our exit so we had to keep like backtracking to find a bridge and it just it took up a lot of time and we had a lot of ground to cover well we've been doing a good job avoiding the rain but i think it's just about inevitable now driving right into that and the road's already wet we are two hours from the upper peninsula which i was going to try to cross the bridge into the right there. We'll see what the weather says about that. So it's been a couple hours. It took us a while to get out of the woods. Um, and then, man, we were just like trying to outrun this storm. And it's coming up behind us. And there's another one. And we're just going to cross the Mackinac Bridge. And there's a, like a national forest right there. We're going to try to hopefully get into camp we're not gonna get there as early as we wanted but hopefully before dark so it kind of sucks being on the interstate if i don't travel far enough on any one day then it means that i have to drive more the following day right and that sucks so by getting this out of the way we should really only have to cover like two or two maybe three hours of driving tomorrow to be in a good shape for sunday but yeah, I'll put a little picture of what the radar looks like. I'm just hoping that go, by going up this far north that we get out of all this rain. That would be super sweet. So this was all of our first times in Lower Michigan, and obviously it was our first time seeing this bridge too, and I had no idea that this bridge was this long and this big, and it didn't help that the speed limit was 45 miles per hour. It felt like we were up there forever and the lanes were surprisingly narrow with curbs right on either side and i just started thinking about oh geez you know you look away for one second and you're hitting a curb and hopping this little rail that's only like two and a half feet tall yeah all you see is water i bet it's also because it probably So we found us National Forest. Wow. So I thought we were already in it. 
this is a forest service road it's so close to this tourist town and there's a couple campsites up here i got a feeling they're going to be taken because it's friday night but i don't know we'll find out Well, the easiest one to get to it's open it's a decent clearing but the grass is all four feet tall so i'm gonna see if we can find something better we'll come back to it if we have to but it's basically like a clearing but it's all like this The only spot we found that wasn't overgrown is that spot where that van was and everything past him moved into private property. So we had to turn around and go check out option well, number three. Well, clearly been on here. Bush light box. Now we just gotta... Makes you wonder. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a swamp. Spoiler alert, it did turn into a swamp and there was actually such a huge mud hole down there We didn't want to try we had to turn around and go look for something else and by something else I meant we found a campground We got ten foil meals going and it's so good those campsites that we found sucked ass and there were bugs everywhere So we just found a little campground We got a whole production going here Not even using the stove You ready to chow down? I'm already in <laughs> Eating it raw. It's corn. <laughs> it's not raw. <laughs> I have it in the kielbasa too. Yum yum. Woo. Ooh. Ooh. So hot. I can't even keep my hand in there, dude. It's roasting me. Yep. Shit, I only got it halfway. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, look at that hole. Oh, no. Coming apart. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's only one one side. That's why we used to. I got all of them at Amber's again. You boycotting me? <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you wouldn't have yours if I you wouldn't have cut that stuff up. But you did flip yours way later than we flipped ours, so... You wouldn't have food if I had not. I wouldn't have food at all? If I wouldn't have cut it all. Yeah, it could be worse, but at least we get to go over there and have a shower tonight. Whew. There's hot coals falling down on the side of here. Oh, man. It looks so good. So we got a hamburger, pinto beans, Spanish rice, kielbasa, hot dogs, red potatoes, broccoli, and what else did we put in there? Cheese. There's the cheese. Close oh, it. Oh, shit. What do you got? Bacon, Yours is probably all green. It is not all green. Look, there's <laughs> potatoes, there's <laughs> corn, there's <laughs> kielbasa. Oh my gosh. It is not green hardly at all. Thank you very much. The best. You've been you've been talking about this nonstop for like a week. I can't wait till we have tin foil meals. Actually, it's been longer than that. Yeah, it probably has. I know I have. Oh my god. Well, That's the only thing it, I've wanted to eat. Is it uh, meeting your expectation? Of course, because it's got broccoli in it. Well, at least I didn't have to stink up my house with your stupid steamer. <laughs> I'm gonna do. You know what? I'm gonna do that Monday. I'm gonna steam some broccoli just to piss you off. Oh. That's how it is. I'm gonna start you it at already, 4 30. You already cooked something the other day. I didn't use the steamer. I'll start it at 4 30. So you get I don't know what it is. We got one of those insta pots and if you use it to steam broccoli, the whole house smells like the landfill and like I walk in there and I start gagging. It's so bad. I don't know how it smells so bad, but it does. Like I walk Monday in, when like, you walk in from work. I walk in, is that broccoli or is that the rabbit? <laughs> And it was you the ready trash to chow that down? you hadn't taken out. <laughs> Alright, another piece. 
Whoa, fuck. You come over here so I can find one. I only put like two in there and I done ate two already. Ah, you put three. They broke in half. <laughs> so proud of you. <laughs> it's good when it gets all the How's it looking? Did your cheese melt? Oh, yeah. Dude, if you've never made this at camp, you literally just bring anything that you like and you pile it in there, throw it in the fire, and it's the best ever. Oh my God. If only us are trying to get shit together for a shower and it's like one in the morning. Are you surprised? Not really. Just, we can never <laughs> do anything on normal people time. This was about the midway point of our trip and we still have so much stuff left to explore and so much stuff to see and maybe even find one of those elusive fire towers I've been talking about. So I appreciate you guys coming and I hope you come back for part two. Thanks for watching.